Jake. I'm Tom. And I'm Ian. And we are VIMTV Velocities in Music. Today, guys, we're going to do the new album, uh, the second album from a band called The Pains of Being Pure at Heart, which I will refer to as The Pains, thanks to Anthony Fantano. Um, <laughs> it, it, this album is called Belong. This album has sparked a, a, a fire of, of, of hype. Around around this album, um, since the band had a, such a successful showing with their first album, this is very anticipated. I think a lot of people are loving it, um, and and honestly, I, I'm I'm wondering why now. The reason why Ian's here to help us out with this one is because a lot of there's a lot of varying opinions on this album um, uh, across music critics and even within VIMTV, and so that's why Ian's here is because we want to represent the side that did like this album because I think me and Tom are a little bit cooler on it. Ian, what you think? <laughs> Uh, well, Tom, <laughs> so Jake, <laughs> uh, well, Jake uh, and Tom, um, I liked it a lot. Um, I'll, I'll get a few personal biases out of the way. Um, one, I am a huge 90s fan. I didn't really latch on to the 90s um, until I went and uh, looked at a couple top 100 albums of the 90s. And as soon as I heard bands like uh, Pavement and Sebado and My Bloody Valentine and The Cure, I, mean, I knew of The Cure before, but once I heard all of them and understood like the real body right. of work about the 90s, I just went, I am in love with this. Right. Um, that being said, uh, you can't listen to Belong and not pick up on all of those bands. Yeah. I mean, you, you, hear every, you hear everything about it. What was it? You mentioned the Jesus, Jesus and Mary, Mary chain. Thing, yeah. um, My Bloody Valentine is on here. The Cure is definitely on here. Um, it's 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 a '90s All Star record, and I love you know just like watching the NBA All Star game where they score like 200,000 points. That's a, that's a guilty pleasure for me. You know, I really enjoyed it because there's just so many sounds I love here that are just classic. You know, I love you know it's like it's like getting to watch Kobe and LeBron in the same court. I just I really enjoyed that. Um, it's an infectious album. It's just you know just like the '90s. It's it's so like. It's so like self-deprecating and so so you know it's so honest and sincere and down to earth that it, it's hard not to fall in love with this record, um, um, unless you're Jake and Tom and have no soul. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, we are music it's, critics. <laughs> it's uh, you know there's just so much about this album that I like. It's it's so catchy. It is verse, chorus, Bieber chorus. I'll admit it's it, the song structure is very simple. Took the words um, out of my mouth. <laughs> but I mean, as soon as Belong hits, as soon as that that real wash of guitar drops and uh, and his his kind of lilting, almost almost failing voice uh, comes over the top of it you, you can't help but go yeah no I belong I, f I felt like I've had to tell myself I belong right. before and I think that's really what comes through in every single piece I love um, heart in your heartbreak because who hasn't been there and who hasn't had to look back on an old relationship and kind of smile at it that it didn't work out you know and then another part of this that, that, that um, I don't know that these two guys have thought of is is listen to their last record and listen to this record they completely 180 from like this shoegaze sound to this really up be concise uh, sound, yeah, a very poppy sound, and I think that transformation is commendable because they did it without missing a beat. Right. Um, you know, that being said, I don't think it's the greatest record I've ever heard. That that verse, chorus, Bieber chorus certainly hurts it. Um, the fact that I, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a good length, but honestly, I almost would have liked to have heard a couple more heard a couple more tracks. Um, and and the fact that there's nothing terribly innovative about this. And as a big you know Radiohead Panda Bear fan myself, I do like to look for that a little bit of that in my tracks. But, but then you would be sacrificing the throwback sound. Which you love so yeah, absolutely, much. absolutely. So, so to me, the the song structures were an issue. Now, I, I I feel like these guys bring something to the table that you mentioned that that charm, that X factor that makes these songs super catchy. This is an endearing list, you know. I think that it. Absolutely. I think that really anybody is gonna have certain parts of this album where they're like, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> For me, that was track six, even in dreams, where it says, even in dreams, I I cannot betray you. I'm married, so that's the way it works for me. <laughs> but you know, you know, and like I I was even able to to appeal to that. But but one thing, and I'm gonna actually let Tom talk more about. The the production which did bother me but the song structures did um, bother me because it just felt like by the end of the record it did get taxing you knew what they were doing you knew what was coming um, and and it, it, it to me, that gets bland if you do that on every single track. I want to see variety. I want to see bands try to do something new with their sound and, and present it in a way. And if they are going to do a verse, chorus, verse, chorus thing consistently throughout the album, then the songwriting has to take over and be good enough that it blends it well and it doesn't make it stick out like a sore thumb. You have to keep things from being predictable because then that's what makes it get stale. I do think that this gets a little stale. I still really liked it. Um, I just feel like there's several problems here that are going to keep it out of a, a good range for me. Um, um, Tom, please, let's just... I'm, I'm going to be the negative Nancy yep. on this one, folks. I really did not like this album, 
And uh, to tell you the truth, it's it's for most of the reasons that that Ian actually pointed out that right. that he didn't like. I think they just bothered me even more. Right. Is a thing. Um, to me, the, the songwriting and because of the songwriting and the production styles, mm -hmm. these songs don't differentiate from each other to right. me. And a lot they, of that's due to the production. Yeah, they all just kind of bleed together in my head. Um, mm -hmm. another, a lot of distortion. Oh yeah. Another thing is, I feel like it very much does have that that early '90s sound that we talked about. Uh, but the deal is, to me, they these guys do not bring enough new to the table for me. They they call upon their influences so heavily that I feel like I don't actually get the pains of hearing right. being pure hearts own individual like injection into the sound, addition to it. Right. For example, um, when we reviewed Destroyers Kaput earlier this year, that had a, a lot of influences of like Roxy music mm -hmm. and a, a lot of you know ambient and even kind of like disco-ish right. stuff from the 70s, but very much Dan Behar's you know right. own attitude and stuff went into it. I don't get anything like that here. I feel like rather than being influenced by that sound, these guys are just trying to do it. Right. And to me, just because it's 20 years ago and not five years ago doesn't make it any more original uh, it's not like the farther you go back in your influences to, to call upon right. makes it more original it's right. still it just kind of bothered me nothing so, like whereas it sounds like this album for you Ian and there's nothing wrong with this where it kind of went boom right to the heart for me it was boom and then it bounced off me and didn't stick with me at all I don't even really remember what many of these songs sound like after like five listens it's just kind of like blah. Mm -hmm. I just didn't do it for me. What, one thing that I do want to point out um, that I haven't experienced since uh, we reviewed Girls Women, um, or um, I'm sorry, gir <laughs> girls, girls Albums. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good album title for that. <laughs> um, it, is that on the, on the Girls' latest album, you know, you heard, you heard these guitars that were just so underproduced or produced in a way that just made the distortion so sharp sounding that it honestly hurts my ears when I listen to it. And I'm not listening to this at an unreasonable volume. I mean, I'm in an office, so I can't. So, um, <laughs> And, and it got to it got to the point on this album where I actually felt pain in my ears. That is a no-no for me. I feel like with the te technology we have today, especially since this was made in 2011 and not the mid-90s, so there isn't a context to take it in, I feel like it's unacceptable. I feel like you should at least tailor your sound a little bit so that it sounds pleasing um, and doesn't cause pain to your listeners ears it's kind of like a double-edged sword right and i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna interject in a different perspective on that they're saying that it's it's underproduced or it's not very original. No, I, I said the, it, it's painful it, painful okay, <laughs> painful my my maybe that maybe that's the pains of right being pure. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to give a different perspective. I think what I think what they did was very purposeful. I think if you look sure. at it as a band going from shoegaze to '90s, there's obviously a lot of intention here. And so I think with that in mind, another way that you could look at this record is is um, it's like sitting down with a good friend and talking about a breakup over a beer. Um, you know, he's sitting there and he's bouncing cliche lines yeah. off. You like, oh, uh, you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea, and you know, you'll <laughs> find somebody else, the right one's still out there, stuff like that. And yet it's so comforting. Yeah. You know, you've heard it before. You probably even thought those things to yourself, but until someone else said it to you, you didn't feel the same level of, of personal comfort. Yeah. Um, and you know, another thing is, is, is I, I think that's reflected in the album artwork. It's a, it's a, it's a picture of a boy. Um, just, just who appears just lonely, and and the title is belong. I mean, I, so much of this is is just about is just about comfort, and I think the the the, the verse chorus. Well, it's style, an emotional yeah, connection. Absolutely, the verse chorus style, um, the the old '90s sound. I think it's a very familiar yeah. record, and I think it conveys yeah. what they're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. If if you look at this like Tom and I are, which is very analytically, it's going to be harder for you to emotionally connect, which is what it's going to take mm -hmm. to really appreciate this sound. Absolutely. So, what did you guys think? I, I I'm feeling um, a 64 on this one. I think that, like I said, it could be better. Um, there's a lot. Of things I like about it. No, I, I, I agree with Tom on several points. I think that there's a lot of places where they could have gotten more original. You know, I said, you know, it's very it's a very welcome record, but you can take welcome and, and, and stretch it a little mm -hmm. bit and change and go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it an 82. Okay. I'm actually gonna go a little lower than I originally said. I'm gonna go 54. The more I talk about it, the more it kind of bothers me, to yeah. be honest. So. so we got three different opinions here. I wanna know where you guys are at. What did you think of the pains of being pure? It's hard second album. Did you love it? Hate it? Why? Tell us at www.velocitiesandmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocities and music. Check out Ian's uh, blog slash written review section at our Tumblr page, vimtv.tumblr.com, and follow us on Twitter, we are vimtv. Um, I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And I'm Ian. And we are VMTV Moving Music Critique Forward.